All right, folks, let's look into a wild true crime story that'll have your jaw on the floor. Back in 1981, a gruesome quadruple murder went down in the Laurel Canyon neighborhood of Los Angeles. And it's a real doozy. The victims were all linked to a gang of burglars and drug addicts, and they were brutally beaten to death with pipes in a townhouse. The kicker? Porn star John Holmes, who was friends with the victims, was a suspect. Allegedly, Holmes and his friend Nash were involved in some shady business with the burglars and drug addicts, and things took a dark turn. As the investigation unfolded, the spotlight kept shifting between Holmes and Nash, with both of them denying any involvement. It was a real cat-and-mouse game, and the authorities were left scratching their heads, trying to piece together what really happened that fateful night. Ultimately, Holmes was tried for the murders, but was acquitted. However, the police never stopped believing that he and Nash were responsible for the Wonderland murders. Buckle up, folks, because we're about to dive into a twisted tale of Hollywood's darker side. Ramon Novaro, the star of the epic film Ben-Hur, met a brutal and untimely end in his Laurel Canyon home in Los Angeles on October 30th, 1968. It's a story that reads like the script of a noir thriller, Two brothers, convinced that Novaro had a secret stash of cash, decided to take matters into their own hands. What followed was a horrific act of torture and violence that left the beloved actor dead. The crime scene was allegedly a gruesome one, with reports of a silver lead dildo given to Navarro by the legendary Rudolph Valentino being involved. Now I know what you're thinking. How could such a celebrated actor meet such a grisly fate? Well, my friends, the details of this case are enough to make even the most seasoned true crime aficionado cringe. Needless to say, Ramon Navarro's life came to a tragic end that fateful day. It's a sobering reminder that even the brightest stars can fall victim to the darkness that lurks in the shadows of Hollywood. All right, folks, I'm about to dive into the wild and twisted tale of one of America's most notorious mobsters. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. This guy was the epitome of the ruthless gangster, climbing his way up the ranks through a deadly combination of cunning and brute force. Now, on June 20th, 1947, Bugsy met a rather violent end when he was shot dead by a sniper while sitting in the home of his mistress, Virginia Hill, in Beverly Hills. To this day, the crime remains unsolved leaving us all to ponder the mystery surrounding his untimely demise. Many believe Bugsy's murder was a direct result of the soaring costs of the Flamingo Hotel he had recently completed in Las Vegas. The project had become a financial disaster, and some think his partners in crime decided to take him out to recoup their losses. Others speculate that Virginia Hill herself was embezzling money, which ultimately led to Bugsy's downfall. Regardless of the specifics, one thing's for sure. Bugsy Siegel lived and died by the sword, leaving behind a legacy of violence, greed, and unanswered questions. It's a cautionary tale of the dangers of the mob life and a reminder that even the most powerful can fall victim to their own hubris. All right, folks, keep focused as we dive into the captivating mystery surrounding the unsolved murder of Hollywood director William Desmond Taylor. This case has been puzzling folks for nearly a century, and I'm here to give you the lowdown. At 7.30 on the morning of Thursday, the 2nd of February, 1922, Taylor's body was found inside his bungalow at the Alvarado Court Apartments, 404B South Alvarado Street in Westlake, Los Angeles, a trendy and affluent neighborhood. A crowd gathered inside, and someone identifying himself as a doctor stepped forward, made a cursory examination of the body, and declared Taylor had died of a stomach hemorrhage. The doctor was never seen again, and when doubts later arose, the body was rolled over by forensic investigators, revealing that the 49-year-old film director had been shot at least once in the back with what appeared to have been a small caliber pistol, which was not found at the scene. And let me tell you, the list of suspects is a real who's who of Tinseltown. We're talking actresses, a former chauffeur known for faking a British accent, the works. But despite all the juicy details, this case has never been cracked. All right, folks, let's dive into the curious case of Bonnie Lee Backley's tragic demise. This one's a real head scratcher, let me tell you. Back on May 4th, 2001, poor Bonnie was shot to death right outside of Vitello's, a Los Angeles restaurant. And get this, 
Her husband, the actor Robert Blake, was the prime suspect. Crazy, right? He was acquitted on the criminal charges, but then found civilly liable. Go figure. Now, Blake claims he wasn't even at the scene of the crime because he'd gone back to the restaurant to grab a gun he'd left there. Hey, I can't make this shit up. He actually said that. This case has got all the makings of a juicy true crime drama. Mysterious circumstances, a famous actor accused of murder, and a whole lot of unanswered questions. It's the kind of thing that really makes you wonder what the heck was going on behind the scenes. Anyway, that's the gist of it, folks. Bonnie Lee Backley's untimely demise is still shrouded in mystery, but you can bet your bottom dollar there's more to this story than meets the eye. All right, folks, let's dive into the tragic story of Sal Mineo, the Rebel Without a Cause co-star who met a brutal end near his West Hollywood home. This one's a real gut punch, so brace yourselves. On February 12, 1976, the 37-year-old Mineo was stabbed to death just steps away from his apartment. The killer? A pizza delivery guy named Lionel Williams. Can you believe that? A random act of violence that snuffed out the life of a talented young actor in the prime of his career. Mineo had already made a name for himself, earning two Oscar nominations for his roles in Rebel Without a Cause and Exodus. He was also about to direct his first film, but fate had other plans, and his life was cut short in the most senseless way. The details of the murder are chilling. Mineo was stabbed multiple times in an apparent robbery gone wrong. Williams was quickly apprehended and convicted, serving 19 years in prison before being paroled. But of course, that doesn't undo the tragedy or bring Mineo back. All right, folks, we're about to dive into one of the most infamous murder cases in L.A. history, the mysterious death of Elizabeth Short, also known as the Black Dahlia. On January 15, 1947, Elizabeth's body was discovered cut in half and completely drained of blood in a vacant lot in the Limert Park neighborhood. The gruesome nature of the crime and the media's sensationalized coverage turned Elizabeth into the infamous legend known as the Black Dahlia. To this day, the case remains unsolved, with countless theories and speculations surrounding Elizabeth's brutal murder. On April 1, 1984, the world lost a true musical icon when legendary soul singer Marvin Gaye was tragically shot to death by his own father. The incident occurred at Gaye's parents' home in the West Adams neighborhood of Los Angeles after an argument between the two men escalated into a physical altercation. The following day, Marvin Gaye would have celebrated his 45th birthday. All right, folks, let's dive into a dark chapter of music history that still sends chills down my spine. On February 3rd, 2003, the legendary music producer Phil Spector committed a heinous act. He shot and killed actress Lana Clarkson in his own home in Alhambra, California. Alhambra is a city in the San Gabriel Valley, just outside of Los Angeles, where Spector lived in a massive mansion. And on that fateful night, Clarkson, who had met Specter earlier that evening, ended up losing her life at the hands of this renowned but troubled individual. After a highly publicized trial, Specter was sentenced to 19 years to life in prison for the murder. And you know what they say? The wheels of justice turn slowly, but they do turn. Specter ended up passing away in prison just a few years ago. Okay, let's look into the mysterious circumstances surrounding the tragic death of the legendary Sam Cooke on that fateful night of December 11th, 1964. The brilliant musician was gunned down at the Hacienda Motel, supposedly by the motel manager who claimed Cooke had attacked her. But hold on, because there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye. For starters, Cooke had a woman with him at the motel that night who conveniently left with most of his clothing. Hmm, sounds a bit fishy, doesn't it? Now, the official story may be what's on the books, but a lot of people just aren't buying it. There's a whole lot of strangeness surrounding the events of that night, and some folks are convinced that the real truth has been buried. Nowadays, you can find a humble grocery store standing where the Hacienda Motel once stood, but the mystery surrounding Sam Cooke's untimely demise lives on. It's the kind of story that makes you wonder what really happened behind closed doors that fateful night. One thing's for sure, the legacy of this brilliant musician will never be forgotten. 
Okay, let's talk about the one and only Notorious B.I.G. He was a true king of the mic, a once-in-a-generation talent who left an indelible mark on the world of hip-hop. Back in 97, this rap legend was gunned down in a drive-by shooting outside the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. It was a tragic end to a life that was just getting started. To this day, the murder remains unsolved, leaving fans and hip-hop heads alike wondering what could have been. All right, folks, listen up. We're diving into some serious hip-hop drama today. You may have heard about the wild case involving Suge Knight, the infamous music mogul, and the tragic death of his friend Terry Carter back in 2015. It's a wild ride, so strap in. Suge Knight, the co-founder of Death Row Records and a major player in the West Coast hip-hop scene, was sentenced to a whopping 28 years in prison for running over and killing his buddy Terry Carter. This all went down during some promotional filming for the movie Straight Outta Compton. Talk about life imitating art, am I right? Now the details are a bit murky, but from what we know, there was some kind of altercation on the set and Sug ended up following him to a local Burger King where he plows his truck right into Carter, killing him. Crazy stuff, I know. Knight claimed it was self-defense, but the courts didn't buy it and he's now doing serious time as a result. Brace yourselves, folks, as we delve into one of the most chilling and notorious crimes in American history, the Cielo Drive Manson murders. On that fateful night of August 8, 1969, the Manson family, a cult-like group led by the twisted Charles Manson, broke into a house being rented by the beautiful and talented actress Sharon Tate and her husband Roman Polanski. What unfolded next was a brutal and senseless act of violence that would shock the world. Tate, along with several of her friends, and an acquaintance of the caretaker, were mercilessly murdered in cold blood. It's a harrowing tale that still sends shivers down the spine of anyone who learns about it. Now, what many people don't know is that the very next day, after the Tate killings, this twisted cult struck again, this time targeting a husband and wife in their Los Feliz home. Leno and Rosemary LaBianca were just living their lives, minding their own business, when the Manson family came barging in and brutally took them out. And get this, the police once again found some seriously messed up messages written on the walls in the victim's own blood. These cases are the stuff of nightmares, but it's also a stark reminder of the pure evil that can lurk in the hearts of some people. The Manson family was a twisted bunch, and their crimes have left an indelible mark on our collective psyche. You know, I remember when the Menendez brothers case first hit the headlines, it was a real media frenzy that captivated the nation. Jose and Kitty Menendez, a wealthy couple in Beverly Hills, were brutally murdered by their own sons, Lyle and Eric, back in 1989. The motive? Allegedly, it was all about the money. These two young men who seemingly had it all decided to take matters into their own hands in the most horrific way. They blasted their parents with shotguns right in their own home. And the trial that followed was a media circus like no other, with the brothers' lurid testimonies and claims of abuse playing out on national television. Both would eventually be found guilty and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. On June 12, 1994, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman were stabbed to death outside of Brown's condo in Brentwood. Brown's ex-husband, O.J. Simpson, was eventually tried and acquitted of the murders but you probably already knew that. This case captivated the nation and sparked countless debates about race, domestic violence, and the American justice system. Even today, over 25 years later, the O.J. Simpson trial remains one of the most polarizing and controversial legal proceedings in modern history. All right, folks, we're about to jump into the Hillside Strangler case. Now, this is one that has captivated audiences for decades, and for good reason. It's the stuff nightmares are made of. Let's set the scene. In the late 1970s, cousins Angelo Buono and Kenneth Bianchi were terrorizing the streets of Los Angeles, kidnapping and murdering at least 10 young women. And get this, they said that most of the murders were committed right at Buono's home and auto upholstery shop in Glendale. Both would be arrested and sentenced to life in prison. Bono died in prison in 2002, while Bianchi, now 72, 
is imprisoned in Washington State. 